Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and this is just a fun, quick case I wanted to show you. Uh, this was a somewhat painful, itchy bump. Uh, I can't remember the site, maybe the abdomen of a patient, and the, the concern was that maybe it could be a skin cancer, so it was biopsied by the dermatologist. You can see this patient has some solar elastosis here. They've got lichen simplex chronicus here, which is thickening of the epidermis that's reactive from scratching or rubbing or picking. So this has clearly been bothering them. In the middle, there's this like little crater. And so sometimes squamous cell carcinomas can grow in this crateriform uh, pattern, and so can keratoacanthomas, which are uh, a kind of complicated topic that some people think are a type of squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, and others think are benign because they regress on their own sometimes. In any case, uh, there are other videos I have on my channel about those things, but that was the concern clinically. And there also was some wonder, maybe this is a ruptured cyst or a folliculitis. So in this uh, downward shaped uh, depression, you can see there's keratin, the bright pink stuff here. There's also this purple grungy degenerated material. Sometimes we see that in things that are called uh, perforating disorders, like reactive perforating collagenosis or elastosis perforans serpiginosa and some other fancy dermatologic diseases like that. Uh, this case isn't anything quite so exotic, but it's still kind of cool and I hope you'll enjoy. So, so always keep perforating disorders in your differential when you see this downward invagination of the epidermis with grungy degenerative material. But the clue here is when we go a little closer, inside these purple areas, look what we see. There are some little white or gray, I don't know, off-white colored uh, particles there. Do you know what that is? This is what happens when you examine them under polarized light. You put your polarized filters in, turn the light up bright and rotate it. And these things turn bright. They're, they are birefringent or, or polarizable. They're viewable as bright, uh, bright glowing objects under polarized light examination on a light microscope. So it turns out there was some history here that we didn't know about. This patient had had an operation years ago and had sutures put in. And one of those deep sutures had finally worked its way up and perforated out of the skin. So we can call that a perforating suture or a suture with, with a perforation or the other word for perforation phenomenon is transepidermal elimination phenomenon. The skin is trying to eliminate the foreign material by eliminating it and pushing it through the epidermis and out of the body. So the body likes to do that with anything foreign if it is able to. It also does that sometimes with, with uh, granulomas, sometimes with parts of the dermis that die, like in there's a disease where you get a pain bump on the ear called chondrodermatitis nodularis helicis or CNH and in that uh, situation you get some death of the dermis and sometimes also of the underlying cartilage of the ear and because it's dead then the rest of the skin tries to grab that dead stuff and perforate it out or transepidermally eliminate it. So the body does that with suture as well. Sometimes the suture may be years and years after. So these are colloquially called spitting stitches or spitting sutures uh, by, by non-medical people a lot of times because the body's trying to spit it out. And let's face it, spitting suture or spitting stitch is a lot easier to say than transepidermal elimination phenomenon. We've got to make everything sound a little more fancy in medicine, I think. But these are good things to find because uh, number one, once you find this, then it explains all of what you're seeing. Because sometimes you can get reactive atypia of the keratinocytes uh, around these uh, these little uh, areas and you can struggle wondering maybe it could be a cancer or something. And once you find the foreign material in there, then it's pretty obvious that probably what you're dealing with is all reactive to this foreign material. The best example of a, of a spitting stitch or spitting suture that I ever saw was actually when I was in training. I was in fellowship and I saw patients in clinic um, for part of the day and one patient came in with this painful bump on her abdomen and I think she was like, uh, she was in her maybe she was 55 or 60 years old, something like that. And um, and so we thought maybe it was a ruptured cyst, but we wanted to go and biopsy it just to make sure. And when we got in there to biopsy it, uh, we got a little bit into the skin and what did we find? Of course, a suture, a big round tied off knot of suture with a little loop on it. And it turns out that she had had a C-section to deliver her baby 30 years previously. And this was one of the stitches that had come up adjacent to the C-section scar. And the body continued to try to work that stitch, that suture out of her skin all those years later. So it's kind of amazing that the body never gives up when there's a foreign uh, particle, foreign material there, the body and the granulomas that it makes and the epidermis, everything works together to try to either wall off that foreign stuff or push it out of the body. And it was really impressive to see that uh, and we all were happy that it was a benign thing for that patient so this is not a biopsy from that patient by the way but it just was one of those things that stuck in my mind as mind-blowing that all those years later the body was still trying to get that stitch worked out um, of course
course, most of the time the stitches are just fine and either dissolve on their own or stay put. But every once in a while, they, they kind of irritate the immune system and the body and the, the skin and the body try to transepidermally eliminate it or spit it out. So a spitting stitch, spitting suture, uh, kind of fun, interesting case. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.